Hi everyone! My name is Ruth and welcome to the 211th day of my challenge where a three-day journey will start today because I'm gonna try something which I don't think many people do at home. Seriously, like who does that? Especially when you learn that it takes three days, but one of you Kimmy actually asked me to try out this recipe because she was, uh, well, curious about the end result. So let's see in three days, shall we? <laughs> so um, that's actually kind of everything I wanted to mention because other than that, I don't have any substitutions. I have all the ingredients and I'm ready to start this journey. Oh, the only thing actually I wanted to mention, which is not that much ingredients related it's about the recipe itself I edited the heck out of it just because I like to have the written recipe in a way that I would understand it that is the first time like this time when I will be trying I'm pretty sure I will be referring to Laura's original video however I want to be able to just read the recipe and be able to make it on my own and the way it was written was just way too complicated and I actually had to count how many times she did particular things just because it didn't really match up the written recipe and the video so yeah I just wanted to put it out there if you love Laura's style of written recipes then definitely check on her website other than that in the description box down below you will find the really heavily edited for my version of it. So now let's go over the ingredients and let's get started. We're gonna need 550 grams of flour, 300 milliliters of whole milk, 50 grams of sugar, 30 grams of butter, one tablespoon of instant yeast, one and a half teaspoon of salt, and some egg wash, that is one egg beaten with a one tablespoon of milk, which I will actually do later just because I will need it in the very, very end. And now for the butter layer, we're gonna need 230 grams of butter sliced into thin strips. Okay, so today's job will be so quick and easy that by the time I start, I will be dead. So the only job I need to do actually today is to knead the dough, form it into a disc and then put it into the fridge overnight. And the actual interesting part of the recipe will start tomorrow. So Laura makes her dough or kneads her dough on the KitchenAid standing mixer. Now, I'm here to show that you don't really need one uh, to be able to knead the dough. Well, I have to be honest, if I was in Lithuania, I would be using my KitchenAid mixer as well, just because, well, it does the job for you. But as I am currently in Iran and I don't have a standing mixer, here's what I've come up with, which I found is the quickest and kind of least messy and just easiest way to do. I will start everything with the handheld mixer with the dough hook attachments and once everything's pretty much incorpor incorporated I will continue kneading with my hands until the dough is really nicely combined. That's what I always do actually. So yeah that's everything I'm gonna do. I will take all the ingredients for the dough that is flour, sugar, milk, butter, yeast and the salt and just kneaded into a dough. Before proceeding with the kneading and making a mess of my countertop, I actually want to prepare a baking pan, which I will not bake, I will just put there my form disc and then put that whole assembly into the fridge. So if you have a pie plate, actually uh, that's what Laura used, but as I don't really have one, I'll just use a baking pan, a spring form pan. I mean, why not, right? So I will flour it lightly and then I will proceed with the kneading. Now, I wanted to mention this thing countless times and every single one of them I forgot. If you don't really have one, which is a dough scraper, 
And if you're baking a lot, you should definitely look into that. It's so comfortable. It's so easy. You don't get your hands dirty. It's like, it's just does what it says it just scrapes the dough so easily and nicely that i definitely definitely recommend and oh finally the first time i managed to mention it okay this looks really nice so now let's form it into a ball which I will then flatten out into a disc. Okay, disc enough and I'm getting out of breath. This is like an upper body workout. So now, seam side down, putting it into the baking pan. I will sprinkle the top lightly with some flour, cover with some plastic wrap and put it into the fridge overnight. Day two of making croissants and today will be all about making all those layers the croissants have. So tomorrow will actually be just kind of making and baking them. But today, today is all about the layers. And I want to start by preparing my butter layer, uh, which I will make. It will be actually quite quick and easy from what I've seen anyways, we'll see. So I will take two big pieces of parchment paper and I do want them to be big so that I could pull them towards myself, hold them with my weight and then just roll it out. It will be easier like so. And that's why I cut the butter into strips because I want to arrange an 18 uh, centimeters square. So it will be way easier, I feel like, to arrange when they're in strips than if I was just to put, you know, whole pieces of butter. And uh, I will put first the first layer of parchment paper, arrange the square, put the second part on, as I mentioned, pull the parchment paper towards myself, hold it with my weight, and then just roll it out. At first, as I can expect, it will just turn into a blob, but then I will trim the edges, put the trimmed parts on top of the butter layer, and then just kind of roll a little bit more to just adhere them into the square. And if I need any more adjustment, I'll just use my hands, you know, cook's best tool. There, square it is. And now, just like this, I will put it into the fridge for 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes have passed, but I still have my butter in the fridge just because now I will work a little bit with the dough so my butter can get even colder. So let's have a little peek at this. And I put a towel just because, well, this was kind of not sticking. So, don't be alarmed. That's exactly how it should be like. Uh, it should rise a bit, which it did, but it shouldn't rise terribly. So I was actually well, expecting that as Laura, well, warned about that multiple, multiple times in her video. So now what I want to do, I will lightly flour the surface and then roll it out into a 25 centimeter square. And I'm loving this recipe because I can use my ruler without any shame or anything as much as I want to. So I will roll it out into a square and then this is another thing that you should have for this recipe that is a pastry brush because there will be a lot of brushing off the excess flour from the surface of the dough. So once this looks like a rectangle, yeah, not rectangle, square, <laughs> I will brush off the top from the excess flour. hardened up really nice. So now I want to put this layer of the butter into the center of the dough and line up it with the corners. This is so 
cool. Okay. Like so. I feel like my layer of butter is a little bit bigger than it should be. But now what you want to do is kind of stretch out a corner and fold it onto the butter. Yeah, something should be bigger. Either this dough or the butter layer should be smaller, which we cannot really make it smaller at this point, so I'll just make like so. So now, let's take another corner, shall we? Take a corner of the dough, kind of stretch it a bit and fold it onto the butter. Then, shake off, well not shake off, brush off the excess flour and continue with the rest of the corners. What do I do? This butter actually should be enclosed in the dough, so should I just make the butter layer smaller or should I somehow stretch the dough? I think I might stretch the dough actually. There, look, we made it work! <laughs> Okay, so now I actually shouldn't have done that even brushed because now I will flour the surface of this. How nicely is my butter enclosed inside, right? <laughs> and then roll it out into a 20 by 60 centimeters rectangle, which actually will be kind of like the end of the surface. So let's see how that goes. Okay, very nice if I say so myself. Now, brushing off the top. And now folding it into thirds and brushing the excess flour along the way. Man, this is so cool. <laughs> I feel so fancy. Put it onto something, maybe on this parchment paper. So, as you can see, I just stuck the buttery sides together. Now I will just lightly flour the surface, put the dough onto it, cover with plastic wrap and the kitchen towel on the top and put it into the fridge for 30 minutes. Another 30 minutes have passed and now I will basically do the exact same thing. I will take this dough. Mm, I totally need a third hand. Let me just move this. So I will take this dough and roll it out again into a 20 by 60 centimeters rectangle. Only this time I will make the width what once was the length. You see, like you can see the folding. So it means I will roll it out this time like so. Once I roll it out, I will again brush the top, fold it in thirds, brushing all along the way, and then put it into the fridge, again cover with plastic wrap, the kitchen towel, and I will put it into the fridge for 30 more minutes. After that, I will repeat this process two more times. That is, I will roll it out twice more and after rolling out, I will put it into the fridge for 30 minutes, I will take it out, roll it out again and the last time I will just put it into the fridge overnight.
is done. So just to quickly recap, on the second day of making croissants, I basically made the layers for the croissant dough. So first I prepared the butter layer and then, then I incorporated it into the dough by rolling it out into a 20 by 60 centimeters rectangle for four times and chilling the dough for 30 minutes in between. And that's it. As I said, my job today is done. So this goes into the fridge overnight and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh my God, I feel so far away. So this is day three of making croissants and I will actually now start making them. So I was debating whether I should do what Laura did, that is cut my dough in half and then roll out two smaller rectangles or should I try out and make how they're supposed to be made? That is, roll it out into a 20 by 110. I cannot even reach it. How will I, how will I roll it out? I think I will have to like move or something. I don't know. I measured my table that from this point to that ruler over there is 110 centimeters what I need for the length of it so <laughs> let's see how that goes Okay, now I need to brush off any excess flour, which I honestly feel like there's not any flour, but let's do it anyways. Now, you want to take a ruler and make markings along the longer side of the dough every 15 centimeters. But before that, actually, you want to trim the very edges so that it's straight. And now you want to cut each rectangle on a diagonal, making two kind of triangles. Oh my god, this is so cool. I cannot believe I'm doing this. Okay, so now I'll take each triangle and readjust it a little bit. I want this pointy uh, part of the triangle to be centered so I'll just use a rolling pin and my hands to just kind of readjust it to the triangle I want. Okay, I feel like these are way bigger than Laura's. And now I will loosely make it into a croissant. I cannot believe I'm doing this. Wait, didn't I need to brush the flour off? Oh, I did! Duh. Okay, so roll, roll, roll. <gasps> Look at this! Okay, it's the corner one, so I'm not really worrying about it too much, but then you want to take the both ends and kind of pinch them together. They will come apart, but this will help it to hold it cheap. Oh my god, this is so cool. Okay, so now I'll just continue with the rest of the triangles. And now I brought a couple of sorta like baking sheets just because I don't have enough. I will line them with parchment paper, transfer my croissants onto them, cover them with kitchen towels, and let them stay at room temperature for one hour. Okay, 
and now as I'm 10 minutes away from one hour being up I will prepare my egg wash that is I will beat one egg with one tablespoon of milk and I will turn on my oven to preheat to 200 degrees Honestly, cannot believe I'm doing this. So one hour has passed. I brought one of my baking sheets with the croissants. I will keep them covered for now just because I know that once I open, I will start speaking in a squeaky voice and no one wants that. So you could bake your croissants at the same time. If you have a normal sized oven, I mean, why not? You then should put it on the top and well, upper and lower thirds of your oven but halfway through don't forget to like switch the baking sheets in between and rotate them as well now my oven is really small and in addition it doesn't really bake that evenly so as I did work for this for three days I'm not risking anything so I will be baking one baking sheet at a time in the very middle of the oven so that I am sure everything will turn out perfectly. So now, once I open and go into my squeaky voice mode, I will brush the tops of the croissants very nicely with some egg wash and then put them into the oven for 23 minutes. Oh, they're so cute. I told you, I told you about the squeaky voice though. I have to see. Oh, oh my god! Look at this! Okay, it's so funny because the camera is quite far. Can you see it? Oh my goodness! While they were baking and when I took them actually out, I was like, oh my goodness! This will not turn out like a croissant because they kind of look too dense or I don't know okay I'm like now I'm getting why Laura was doing that can you see it this is croissant oh my god okay exiting the squeaky voice mode mmm this is so tasty. Oh my god! If I stand here and eat this whole croissant like right now in front of you, you cannot be angry at me. I mean, this is so funny. I have pomix, literally. These are the funniest eggs. I've ever had in my life here and here hurts like hell it actually started yesterday when I was going to sleep I was like what is this weird sensation in my hands and today when I was rolling out that little I don't know pathway I felt it so bad so yeah be prepared for that but This is what this was so worth it, really. You know, if a recipe like this can be accomplished and succeeded with like applause by a person who has never tried making anything like this before, then this is an amazing recipe.
That's all I can say while snacking on my homemade croissant. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you wouldn't like to be now here, take one of these beauties and just enjoy it. <clears throat> now, I have to look what other recipes Laura has with croissants because I have quite some of them, right? <laughs> mm. Mm. I cannot believe it. I will send the link to this video to all of the members of my family because I just want to boast. <laughs> Seriously, I think this might be one of the most impressive things I've done in my life. I mean, this is creation. This You create this with your hands. How can it... Like, they look... Okay, they look a little bit different. Look slightly, slightly different than what they would look like in the shop. Like, you see, for example, this one. Like, it has some kind of belly. And, like, it's fat. Fatter looking. I don't know how to say. Like, it's like little fat croissant. But, um... This is homemade, so you wouldn't expect it to be exactly the same like in the bakery, right? But, oh my god, the taste is so good! I'm so happy. Okay, okay promise, stop eating. I'm just so proud of myself, honestly. So, if you are as well, because... These were made by me trying this recipe for the first time any kind of croissant recipe for the first time so if you haven't subscribed yet will i start like spinning here or what? i feel like i deserve you do that and don't forget to push the like button i mean like come on i deserve that at least this time i really really deserve that so anyways i really hope that this was fun and that this was helpful who was oh sorry i forgot your name like you know three days passed but now because they are great i'm waiting from you the person who asked me to try this recipe i will wait a picture from you on any of the social media I'm everywhere i will wait a picture from you as a proof that you tried this recipe as well because i mean i feel like i deserve that too <laughs> So again, if you want, go and check the original recipe by Laura there. You can find the written one in both American and the metric systems in the description box down below. I really, really want to thank you watching this video for watching this video because I know, like at this point, I haven't edited it, it yet, but I know it will be quite a long one. But, you yeah, know, I'm not cutting anything out because this is just... This is an accomplishment, and I'm really grateful you watched up to this point. So thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!